Before we talk about how AI might influence or kill software engineering as a whole, don't do it! <laughs> First, we need to understand the history of AI. Since the 1950s, when Alan Turing released his paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, where he discussed how to build intelligent machines and how to test them, so much has changed since then. AI went from this black box technology where only the brightest of the bright could develop and use to create amazing tools to where now we're actually using AI to replace what humans can do. So one of the biggest changes that has happened that's gotten us here today with AI and how we think about it replacing software engineers is a neural network architecture called Transformers. So I won't go into two details about Transformers. One, because there's many other videos and articles you can find online. And two, I'm not an AI engineer, so I don't really know the intricacies of it. But what I do know is that up until Transformers was released by Google, there have been different other neural network architectures that have been applied for different use cases, but none have been sufficient enough to do something like like generate a full story like ChatGPT can do or generating art like Stable Diffusion can do. So when we think about AI today and the tools that we're using, what we're really thinking about is how this Transformers architecture and neural networks are being used to create something, right? Whether it's text or images, videos, music, something's being created. Now, when we apply that to software engineering, the big thing that comes to mind is this AI can write code. There are already a bunch of AI tools that you can use as a software engineer to help you do your job. The big ones are code generation, searching, debugging and testing, generating documentation from scratch, and even code review. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows when it comes to these tools actually helping you out. Sure, they can save you a bunch of time and help you do remedial redundant tasks that you probably don't feel like doing, but it's not always perfect. AI generated code can sometimes honestly feel clunky and it's not as polished as code generated from a human mastermind software engineer. So for some of those real world examples today, I mean, there's Copilot created by Microsoft and GitHub. It's an extension you can use in VS Code and it's very helpful. You can use it to ask questions about your code and reason about it, write documentation, write little snippets or full pages of code to help you do something. And all you have to do is just describe in your natural language what it is that you want it to do, and it'll assist you. And even now they have a new version on the horizon, Copilot X, which aims to go even further than what Copilot is doing, taking advantage of GPT-4. It's honestly been a game changer for many engineers. Me personally, as someone who isn't writing code every day professionally anymore, but when I'm working on any of my side projects, I was kind of reluctant to use Copilot. One, because I just didn't know how to use it. And two, I actually like the exercise of writing the code myself. It's therapeutic for me to sit down as an engineer and to write code, it's an outlet. So having something replace that and do it for me just didn't seem like something that I'd be interested in. But then I picked it up. And when I realized what I got from it was something that I didn't know that I needed. And it felt like collaboration. Just having someone else, or in this case, something else, look at my code and provide feedback was something that I've always had as a professional engineer. Now that I'm just some VC who writes code on the side in their free time, I don't really have that collaboration. So Copilot felt like that collaboration for me. So let's talk about the future of AI and software engineering. Well, as AI technology keeps leveling up, keeps getting better, we can expect more mind-blowing tools to come out every single day. And believe me when I tell you, there are more mind-blowing tools coming out every single day. I'm looking at them, I'm seeing them. But remember, AI isn't some magical unicorn, some wand where you can just tap and get exactly what you want. Instead of replacing human engineers, AI is more likely to create new roles and responsibilities in the field and kind of just redefine and rethink what it means to be a software engineer, especially for the entry level position. So let's tackle the big problem. Will AI replace software engineers? Well, I think the first thing to think about is separating what it means to be a programmer and a coder. To me, coding is just one way of which you can program a system. A programmer to me is someone who has critical thinking abilities and problem solving skills and can think of and craft different solutions to solve a problem. Coding just being one of those outlets and how the problem is solved. But the critical thinking part is still very necessary. The problem skill part is still very necessary. It's important to remember that human creativity and expertise is still a secret sauce in software engineering. AI has the potential to boost and support these creative software engineers rather than make them vanish in thin air. There's more to being a software engineer than writing code, period. <laughs> like there's just more to it. If all we did was write code, then yeah, I think there'd be a lot more software engineers. 
Take, for example, what it means to be an artist. Yes, we have things like Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion that can generate art, but that art is usually based off on and trained on other artists, human artists. And if human artists stopped today creating art, then we wouldn't have anything new. The AIs wouldn't have anything new to generate. It would just be their best guess replications of what was already there. So we're always gonna need that creativity. And software engineering is no different. To be able to even think about how and what to say to something like Copilot to get the output you want requires some level of understanding of the system that you're interacting with, the problem you're trying to solve, and how to communicate it effectively. To me, that is the programming aspect. And having GPT be the one to write the code for you, that's totally fine. Imagine being a senior software engineer or a lead engineer where you have a bunch of folks working for you on a project. And a lot of the times you find yourselves in a meeting, helping them with architecture, helping them with different examples on how to get things done. But ultimately, those folks that are working with you on the team are probably doing most of the coding. Well, you're kind of just staying high level. And without your guidance, it would be pretty difficult for those folks on your team to actually reach the outcome of what your team is trying to hit, whether it's a feature or some new release or a bug fix. And that's the way that I think of interacting with some of these AI tools of software engineering. You're the senior software engineer in your own world. And the tools that you use are the folks on your team helping you write the code. So to stay in the game and to stay sharp, engineers should focus on skills that work hand in hand with AI. Things like critical thinking, problem solving, and top-notch communication cannot be undervalued going into the future of AI. I mean, imagine being a software engineer in 2015, 2016, when JavaScript frameworks were all the rage and every new one was coming out every single day and you didn't know how to use Google. You didn't know how to ask good questions on Google. You didn't know how to research. That'd be pretty tough. I'm sure you would have figured it out eventually, but having that ability to do research on a search engine, knowing where to look, knowing what questions to ask, how to ask them, what are the best sources when you find the results, that's an ability not related to writing code, but definitely an ability to problem solving. And having that context on knowing what code you're looking at when you're looking at examples is the code that you need and what adjustments you need to make and whether or not this is outdated or not. There's just so much more that goes into it than just writing code. And there's always gonna be a need for someone who understands that. By embracing AI and learning how to collaborate with it, software engineers can honestly do things that have not been possible before. Imagine having more time to think about more complicated, more higher level problems, instead of thinking about what's the best way to write this regex, <laughs> right? It would actually elevate you and your team and eventually create more compelling experiences, more compelling products, things that we haven't been able to do before because our productivity has increased so much. So let's just remember, while AI can be super helpful, I mean, incredibly helpful, it's really just a tool if we choose it to be that way. It does have the power to be more than just a tool. I mean, there's theories out there describing that we're on the brink of creating a new species, something beyond more than just a tool. So when it comes to knowing exactly the future of software engineering and how AI is gonna affect that, I mean, ultimately it comes down to us and how we use it as humans. And what do we do with all this power? <laughs>